Line date, number 8,426. This guy used the word network as a verb. Twice. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna wear. It's at 7.30. Maybe that blue thing. to the new West Coast editor of Le Monde Femme magazine. Oh, yeah! Well, you guys, it's been 12 years, but I finally made it. I know we don't have to tell you how thrilled mm. we are for you. No, you don't, but tell me anyway. <laughs> We're thrilled for you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Now, I don't want this promotion to go to your head. Don't forget, we've known you a while. We have enough dirt on you to make your life a living hell. <laughs> Movingly put, Nick. What's with you? You've been in a mood ever since we got here. Oh, what are you, the mood monitor for the day? Oh, but now, come on, talk to me. What is the problem? I know we can rule out professional jealousy. Oh, absolutely. You want to spend all those hours in that building, that's your business. But you know me, if I'm there after 6.15, I start seeing bars on the window. Well, okay, then what's going on? Leah, when does this job start? Nick, you can't just wait. No. Can't what wait? And what difference does it make when it starts? Does the word vacation ring a bell? Oh, my God, our vacation. See, I can't believe this. She forgot. I, I don't know what to say, guys. I mean, when I found out I was a candidate for that job, I just got so preoccupied. Oh, lovely. Ooh. There we go. Anything else I can do for you, ladies? Mm -mm, thank you. How would you feel about fathering my child? Uh, uh, please forgive her. For what it's worth, her therapist is very optimistic. <laughs> It's just a thought. Don't you ever stop? Don't you ever start? Well, the job starts after we get back, you idiots. Did you honestly think I'd forget? We're going to Rome! Three coins in the fountain Each one seeking happiness Thrown by three hopeful lovers Which one will the fountain bless? Three hearts in the fountain Each heart Longing for its own There they lie in the fountain Somewhere in the heart of Rome Which one will the fountain bless? Which one? Just one wish will be granted One heart will wear a valentine Make it mine Make it mine Make it Rome, Italy? No, Rome, Nebraska, Phil. Yes, Rome, Italy. <laughs> and I can just see it now. Senor, senor, um, I seem to be lost. Can you help her? Help her? You are right. <laughs> Do you know that? Oh, come on, Bon. You get lost here in L.A. and You grew up here. What the hell are you going to do over there? Well, for, for one thing, Nikki happens to be great at finding her way around. Yeah, well, I can't argue with that. Don't start, Phil. Come on. If you fooled around on me like her ex-husband fooled around on her, I'd probably spend the rest of my life in a convent or something. So just give her credit for getting herself back out there. Hey, I give her credit. I like Nikki, you know that. 
you know, I might take her a little bit more seriously if she showed some interest in a permanent relationship. She doesn't want a permanent relationship. She just Yeah, I know wants... what she wants. I'm sorry. I think it's weird. You know, if I had any idea you were going to be so close-minded about this, I never would have told close -minded? you. Close-minded? What if Carolyn came home and started talking like that? I would be supportive and encouraging, and then I'd probably bring her home and lock her in her room till after she went through menopause, but we are not talking about Carolyn, we're talking about Nikki. And besides, Nikki's mostly just talk anyway. So, let's get back to Rome, okay? Did you know that Leah spent two months there after she graduated from college? Oh, well, now see, that changes everything. I had no idea you were going practically a native. Well, can't you at least pretend to be excited for me about this? Look, I know things haven't been exactly great between us for the last couple of months. But I think that spending a little time apart might do us some good. Yeah? Yeah. I thought we'd been spending time apart, just been in the same house. You're going to be late? Yeah. League championships tonight. You sure you don't want to come and cheer us on? Uh, no. I don't think so. Champagne made me a little sleepy. How many glasses do you have? One. One. <laughs> Good luck tonight. Thanks. We're probably going to go stop someplace to celebrate after. You sure you don't want to... Nah. You go on ahead. I do love you, you know. Yeah. I know. Don't get me wrong, Steve. It's not that my marriage ruined me on men. It's just that it ruined me on the idea of needing one. <laughs> you see, since I've decided that I want a child, I realize that sooner or later, some member of your gender is going to have to make a small but meaningful contribution. But other than that, you know, I tend to find this amazing similarity between men and roller coasters. Well, there's nothing that I love more. But no matter how many thrills you get along the way, you always end up right back where you started. Only this time your hair's all messed up and your heart's in your stomach. I guess all I'm really trying to say here is that you strike me as a guy who's looking for something deep, significant, and kind of angst-ridden. And trust me on this, I'm not it. Steve? Steve? I'm sorry, were you saying something? What the hell do you think you're doing? You're ready to make my biological contributions, sir? <laughs> you know, I've heard some pretty creative come-ons in my day, but that Steve. was the best. <laughs> yes? Get out. See, that's the trouble with women like you. You're all talk. Get out. Yes? Uh, yeah, this is Bronson and Security. There's a Mac Chambers here to see you. You're kidding. Oh. Um... It... Uh, send him up, please. What are you doing? Leah? Hi, Mac. What made you think I'd still be here at this ungodly hour? <laughs> Rhetorical question. I'm just so surprised to see you. Why didn't you call? Well, four messages in five days is kind of my limit. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just been so crazy around here. I'd offer you coffee, but it's after 10, which means you switched to decaf exactly 20 minutes ago. Which means I'm out of luck, because you're morally opposed to decaf. And, and bean sprouts. sprouts. <laughs> Sit. How's Dakota? You know, she hasn't slept in the bed since the night you moved out. After it took us three years to get rid of her? That figures. By the way, I've uh, been reading your reviews. 
When you make the bestseller list and you get those flowers with a little note attached that said, I told you so. Can I ask you something? Uh, sure. You said you wanted six months. Then we'd talk. I respected that because you're right. This will never work if only one of us is sure about it. What I'd like to know is how we're going to have this talk if you won't even return my phone calls. Mac, I... Clear. Our relationship. What we had. Anyway. I think it deserves a hell of a lot better ending than that. Don't you? Did you think I'd just leave it at that? Mac, believe me, I wasn't making excuses when I said it's really been crazy around here. The board is here from back east and we've had meeting after meeting. Uh, what would you say if I told you that this very afternoon I was informed that I am officially and finally the West Coast editor of Le Mans Femme magazine? I'd say congratulations. I'd say they couldn't have made a better choice. I'd say... I'd say that if you're gonna use that as an excuse for trying to put me off, it won't work. Thank you. You know, what I happen to think you deserve is a well-thought-out answer. And I just can't give you one of those right now. Yeah, what's, uh, what's all this here? Oh, oh, Nikki and Bonnie and I are just about to take our annual romp. I think it was your turn to uh, plan it. Does he know you're coming? Who? Who? The legendary Marcello. <laughs> no wonder you didn't call. That's ridiculous. For the record, he does not know I'm coming. I mean, I don't even know if he lives there anymore. I haven't seen the man in 20 years. I think you should see him. Really? Well, I think this is just about the silliest conversation we've ever had on this particular subject. Mac, don't you ever get tired of competing with a ghost? Barry, that's my point. I think I better get back to work or I'll be here all night. Oh, here, Nikki, this is our role. That. 40 pounds of natural beauty. Well, I, you know, I, I don't think it's going to close. You're right. Yeah. What is that? Work. What? Why do I always have to sit in the middle? Because you're the smallest. I've just never seen Phil like that before. Every other time he's seen us off at the airport, he's had this great string of one-liners, and this time I felt like I was watching a scene from Wuthering Heights or something. I mean, look, I'm not exactly fair of laughs in the morning either, but... Are you guys okay? Oh, I don't know, Nick. You know, it's like we walk back into this empty house after getting Carolyn settled at school, and... I suddenly looked at this man that I've spent every day of my life with since high school, and I have the wildest impulse to say, excuse me, but who are you? You know what I bet it is? Nikki, believe me, I know what a good man Phil is. I know that I should just shut up and count my blessings. I hate feeling like this. I hate looking at him and my life and thinking, is this it? <laughs> Well, of course, the only reason I even bother to have problems is because they amuse you so much. No, 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 no. Come here. Look at this. Check it out. Oh. Wait a minute. Give me one of these. Listen, we have to get a picture of this, blow it up, and put it in her office. Okay, go. Get the camera. Get the camera. Take that picture. You're a dead woman. That's great. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll please return to your seats, we're about to begin our descent. All right. Signore e signori, prego, fra poco noi scendiamo sull'aeroporto di Roma. Monsieur.
messieurs, dames, nous sommes presque arrivés à l'heure pour du monde. I've been dreaming about this for 20 years. Just give me a minute, okay? I swear it looked a lot bigger than this in 1970. Vostro vicino. Dovete dividere il bagno con lui. Sì, grazie. Avete capito? C'è un signore di New York, il vostro vicino. Dovete dividere il bagno con lui. Ah. <laughs> so, what was all that about? Well, something about uh, New York and bathroom. <laughs> Everything's okay. Bene, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> See? Oh, oh. <laughs> Bene. <laughs> okay. hey. Let's go. Well, they stay have bathrooms. Good here. Here, let me take Italian word for sharing? I don't know. That's what I thought. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Come here and see this. Come here. 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 Well, isn't this special? It's not that bad. Now, don't think of it as inconvenient. Think of it as sweet. Do men take classes in messing up bathrooms or is it just organic? I don't know. Why don't we ask him? A you who, Mr. Sinatra? You know, he, he'll be done soon. What are you pacing that on? We don't even know this guy. Besides, I'm starving. If I don't get cleaned up and eat, I'm gonna become dangerous. Hey! Hey! Hi. Hi. How you doing? Great. Uh, look, we're sorry about this, but... No, we're not. Look, I'm Nikki, this is Bonnie, this is Leah. And I'm Joe. <laughs> Where are my manners? Can I offer you something? Wine, coffee? So, Joe, I guess that uh, you are going to be sharing uh, our bathroom. And I think that if you look up the word sharing in the dictionary, you'll see that it implies a certain give and take, a uh, spirit of cooperation, if you will, that I'm afraid you and your basic disregard for cleanliness have already seriously compromised. 
Is she always this obnoxious, or do I just bring this out in people? Obnoxious? What a jerk! Yeah, well, you know, she's just tired. Come on, Nick, let the nice man finish. You barge into my bathroom, you interrupt my shower, you criticize my grooming habits, and I'm a jerk. Well, you know, there may be help for you yet. Accurate self-analysis is always the first key toward meaningful change. Meaningful change? You want meaningful? You'll get meaningful change, because in about ten seconds, this towel's coming off. Oh, ten, please. Nine, I've already been treated eight, to enough of your inadequacies seven, for one day. Six, Thank you very five, much. Five, four, three, Will you please two, just move it? And what? Oh, by the way, I hear that there are nude beaches in the area. Trust me on this. Avoid them. What is so funny about ordering pizza in an Italian restaurant? Like when you kept ordering poi in Hawaii. Yeah, well, you know, I still don't understand what was so funny about that. <laughs> I know, I think that's one of the things we love. About no, all you. right, all right. Just a few words here from your activities director. Now, I've given our options a lot of thought, and I've decided, if it's okay with you, that tomorrow morning, first thing, we'll start with art museum. Now, I know neither of you is very interested in... What? Nothing. You are so predictable. Martello, is that what you're thinking? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Listen, I'm going to tell you guys this one more time. Okay? I have no intention of looking him up while we are here. And why is that again? Because Martello was then, and, and this is now. All right, I know that... Uh, the last time I heard from him, he was a curator in an art museum, but that was 12 years ago. So, I want you to stop making me feel as though it's odd that I'm going to take you to some of the most famous art museums in the world. Well, I'm certainly convinced. Oh, me too. For you. <laughs> Thank you. No, no, senora. For you. Me? Oh. Well, from who? From the gentleman over there. All right, boss. Yeah, yeah, let's invite him over. <laughs> Absolutely not. Could you please um, return this to the gentleman and tell him thank you very much, uh, but I can't accept it. You know, like? Oh no, no, I like it very much. Um, I, I'm married. <laughs> you are very kind. You killed me. Well, what did you do that for? Well, uh, honey, it was just a flower, not a proposition. I know of that. We've been walking for an hour. Where are we going? How much further? I'm exhausted. <laughs> Come on, guys. We're almost there. If this is anything less than a sighting of the Virgin Mary, I'm gonna kill her. Are we even still in Rome? Rome? I'm not even sure we're still in Italy. <laughs> Excuse me, but is this the same woman who's been known to drive to the restaurant across the street from the office? <laughs> Isn't this the most beautiful fountain you've ever seen? Is it me, or did it look a lot different in the movie? Trevi was the fountain in the movie bar. Oh. If you wanted to see that, you should have said something. It was just a couple blocks from the restaurant. That's it. I'm the killer. <laughs> On the other hand is the historic Bernini fountain. Aha, uh -huh, Bernini. Mm -hmm. What's historic about it? And before you answer that, please bear in mind that I now have two blisters. Would it help to shut you two up if you knew that it was here at this very fountain on a day very much like today that I first met Marcello? It would help. A lot. You're right. Who cares about the Trevi? No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got I got a problem here. Are you telling me that you don't actually want to see Marcello, but you're willing to walk halfway across the city just to get to the fountain where you met the guy? <laughs> we are. I call me crazy, but I detect a flaw in this logic. What are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? It's the wrong fountain, Bung. You want to walk back to the right one? 
Give me one. Here, Leah. It's just the thought of it terrifies me. What if I say, hi, Marcello, it's Leah. And he says, Leah who? What if what I thought of as the most profound relationship of my life, he just thought of as a nice little two-month diversion? Well, he might not. That's right. He might not. I mean, we could just see each other and pick up right where we left off. And then what? My hair looks like someone set cherry bombs off in it. Lee, it looks perfect. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, no. I ripped a seam. Do you have a needle and thread? Yes. You work on the cherry bombs, I'll get the thread. Oh, Here you go. I need a hat. Did you bring a hat? I have a hat. I did. You want it? Oh, thank you, Joe, but I, I couldn't take your hat. You can take anything I own. Just give me the bathroom for two minutes. God, I've never begged a woman for anything in my life. I'm begging you now. Please. We're almost finished, I promise. It's for a worthy cause. Yeah, right. God forbid Leah's hair should look great when she waltzes into this guy's life with no warning, turns it upside down, and then tosses him over when she's finished with him like he's nothing but a... Bag of orange peels. That's not exactly my plan, Joe. No? Then when you finally found out what museum he worked at, what, 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 what did you uh, hang up on him when he got on the phone? See, that, that's the problem with you women. Not only do you play your games, you don't play fair. I had every intention of talking to him. I just panicked. Leah, I don't even know why you're wasting time talking to this guy. You're not much of a morning person, are you? Come on, the bus is out there. Thank you, God. Got it. Okay. Okay, um, just take it easy on the guy. That's all I'm asking. I promise, Joe, I will. Actually, I kind of like him. So do I. What's the like? Oh, I don't know. He just kind of reminds me of somebody. Oh. Oh, heck. You have exactly two seconds to take that back. find the curator's office and um, I'll think of some excuse to get him out. Like what? I don't know, but I'll think of something. Uh, come on. Come on, Bonnie. Uh, excuse me. Uh, we're looking for the curator. Curator, uh, well, uh, head of the thing. Uh, with the, runs the museum. Uh, Over there? very badly or he was great in bed. It has to be the age thing. Nobody's that great. 
Thank you, boy. Uh, well, oh, uh, do, you, do you speak English? Yes, of course. Oh. Palo subito. I like your Americans. I accept that not everyone on earth is fluent in my native tongue. Now, what is it you want? I'm a busy man. Yeah, I'm sure you are, and uh, we hate to bother you, but I promise you, you'll be very glad we did. I'm Bonnie McCaffrey, and uh, this is my friend, Nikki Taylor. You're quite right. That makes me so happy I could die. Is there more? Uh, yes, there is more. Uh, uh, what are the chances of your coming with us for a few minutes without any explanation whatsoever? Too infinitesimal to calculate. Okay. Well, then, listen, what's the chance of your coming with us for a few moments? Because uh, we overheard a woman in our tour group plotting to deface one of your artifacts. What? Right. Well, there she is. Via. Ta-da. Please remain quiet and come with me. I am notifying the authorities. What? what? Who is this? Not Marcello, I guess, huh? Oh, please. What authorities are we talking about? Oh, nothing really. He just about to commit a felony. Carlo, I told you to wait in my office. I think you will change your mind about firing me when you hear this, Signor TLC. You see, this woman was... Martella? <laughs> but it's Senor Dios. You heard the man, Carlo. Beat it. My God, this can't be happening. Is it really you? You look, you look magnificent. I didn't know if you'd recognize me all grown up. a little unnecessary. I'm starting to feel a little kinky. <laughs> so, uh, uh, bye. We'll, we'll see, see you later. later. Bye. Okay. Bye. Oh, oh uh, I'm sorry. These are my very best friends in the world. Uh, Nikki. Bonnie. Oh, he's good. <laughs> Leia's best friends. Then you must be remarkable. He's very good. I can uh, steal her away from you for a few hours. Please do. Frankly, we're sick of her. <laughs> Have a wonderful time. Thank you for everything. Bye. Bye. See you back at the hotel. Oh, don't you kind of feel like a Chuck Woolery? As infrequently as possible, Bon. Listen, I have a very serious question. I want an honest answer. Okay. If you had a choice between taking in some of the greatest art in the world and doing some major damage to a plate of fettuccine, which would it be? It's only 14th century. Let's get out of here. <laughs> I love traveling with you. Bonnie, you here?
Thanks so much. Have you seen Bonnie? No, why? Is anything wrong? No, there's nothing wrong. We just got separated, that's all. It's not that big of a deal. She gets lost at least once on every trip we take. You want me to look for her? No, I don't want you to look for her. As a matter of fact, I don't want you to do anything at all. Why would you even offer? And will you please take that underwear from about your head? You look ridiculous. I don't know. I like Bonnie. Bonnie seems like a nice person. How'd you two hook up anyway? Did she lose a bet or something? For your information, we've been friends for a very long time now. No. See, that's interesting because that means there's something about you that would keep a woman like Bonnie around for a long time. So I give up. What is it? You'll die wondering. You know, not that I care, but don't you have anything better to do in Rome than to sit around your hotel room? Hey, this is my honeymoon. My prepaid, non-refundable honeymoon. I'm sure the bride ran off with her ex-boyfriend two days before the wedding, but why let a little thing like that stop me from having all this fun? Hungry? Well, I have to say that brings us up to date on our professional lives. And I'm not sure we've completely resolved the issue as to whether you want Berber carpeting or bleached hardwood floors in your <laughs> But it sounds to me like the two brave, frightened children that we were went on to conquer our worlds very well. Except you gave up painting. No, no, I just redid the master bathroom. <laughs> so, now that we've demonstrated how skilled we are at the art of polite conversation, why don't we? move on to something a little more personal. Like, why did I stop writing to you 12 years ago? Was that when that was? Oh, you don't owe me an explanation, Marcello. Things like that just happen. You just got busy. Or you lost interest. <laughs> Ran out of stamps. Ah, uh, I got married. I have a 10-year-old son, Leo. He's very beautiful. His name is Antonio. Well, that is just the best news, Marcello. I'm so happy for you. W will you look at the time? I should have been back at the hotel a couple of hours ago. Leia. His wife was killed in a car accident? Leah, that's great. Well, I, I mean, of course, it's, it's not great. And, well, in fact, I'm just sick about it. But, well, he wrote me a letter about it when it happened two years ago, but he sent it to my old address. So, by the time he got it back six months later, it had this smeared, illegible stamp on it from the post office, and for all he knew, I might have just sent it back totally unopened. Boy, the post office is really going to hear from me when we get back. And isn't it gratifying to know how much they're going to care? You know what? I think this is probably the most romantic story I have ever heard, except with the, uh... Duke and Duchess of Windsor, perhaps. So, going out with them or not? Well, that depends. On what? Well, one thing, I'm not going to go anywhere until we know where Bonnie is. Oh, you know, I forgot Phil called twice. Once to ask where his lucky socks were, and the second time to say that he'd found them in the rag basket. Poor guy sounded so sad. He couldn't figure out why I was here and Bonnie wasn't, so I said there was this raffle on the bus and she won an audience with the Pope. <laughs> Give me a break. I was half asleep. You know, even if Bonnie came walking through the door this minute, or staggering, you know, she must be a basket case by now. Well, I hate to leave you guys again because, you know, I don't want to be one of those women who just runs out on their friends every time a man comes into the picture. Um. Everybody decent in there? Yeah. Come on in, Joe. Hi, Leah. I, I hear Marcello took the bait. Well, how romantically put. Any news on Bonnie? Mm -mm. Well, um, reservations are for 8.30. We can push them back if we need to. You're not going to wear your hair like that, are you? I might. And you might eat at another table. Just let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Stop that. Will you stop that? Look, this is nothing at all, okay? It's nothing. The only thing that man and I have in common... I'm only going to dinner... 
I owe him half a sandwich, okay? Okay? Okay. Okay. Thank God. Okay, now listen. If she's hysterical, it's your turn to slap her to calm her down. <laughs> Hi. I'd like you to meet my friend Alfred Bancroft. This is Leah and Nikki. How lovely to meet you. I've, I've heard such delightful things do? about you both. I'll, um, I'll wait downstairs while you change. <sighs> what? And finally, to my well-meaning children, who through some bizarre quirk of logic believed it would accelerate my grieving process to lumber through Europe with a busload of eligible senior citizens, and who, thanks to you, turned out to be absolutely right. Oh, well, I don't know that I deserve that, but they'll drink to it anyway. There you go again, underestimating yourself. I told you I wouldn't have it. I really... I've told you how strongly I feel on this issue. <laughs> I don't see how it's possible that you would underestimate how special you are. Oh. When it was apparent to me from the first moment I saw you. Don't you have any mirrors in your home? Yes, Is that we the have mirrors. <laughs> what do you see when you look at them? Well, um, I see a wife, a mother, an office manager with a perfect attendance record. A grown-up version of a little girl. A little girl whose dreams were much too fragile to survive outside the privacy of her own room. And what did you dream in the privacy of your room? Well, I... <laughs> can't believe I'm telling you this. I used to dream of being a ballerina. Ah. I had this little record player. And I used to spend hours dancing in front of the mirror, pretending I was the most beautiful ballerina in all the world. I particularly excelled at bowing. See, I had this one great move where I'd be in kind of mid-bow, and I'd suddenly dip to one side and pick up a bouquet of roses that one of my many admirers had thrown on the stage at my feet. Huh. But in the real world, I was shy and round and clumsy, so instead of dance class, I enrolled in typing and shorthand, and the rest is show business history. And thank you for not laughing. My dear Bonnie, you're looking at a man who spent those same childhood years pretending to conduct Mahler with the London Symphony, and who went on to become a piano tuner. So I ask you, based on what would I laugh? No, don't take it lightly that even across the crowded restaurant, you managed to make a lonely, self-conscious old widower pluck up the courage to send a flower to a strange woman for the first time in his life. Ah, music. And to my enormous relief, it doesn't seem to be the kind that would need much whirling or dipping. Therefore, May I have the vast pleasure of this dance, my dear Mrs. McCaffrey? Well.
So I step off the plane in Sicily, and there stand about a thousand relatives I never laid eyes on in my life, hugging me, kissing me like we all grew up together. And then somebody says, my Joseph, what is your bride? And I tell him what happened, and this 300-pound giant who turns out to be my uncle Guido steps up, slugs me in the face, and yells, you threw away 40 years of your life on a bouton? Wait a minute. What's a, a bouton? Opposite of a nun. Anyway, I stayed around just long enough to establish myself as the family joke, and then it was on to Rome to have five feet, six inches of solid mouth interrupt my shower to yell at me about bathroom etiquette. So, uh, you'll understand if I don't come off like the world's happiest camper right now. What's your excuse? Yeah, well, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you ought to be real happy. At least you found out ahead of time. You think I had a clue that I was promising to love, honor, and obey a man that made Steve Garvey look like he'd taken a vow of celibacy? <laughs> Tell me about it. If I've heard the phrase... Faithful as an airline pilot once, I've heard it a thousand times. And I suppose the New York City cops are real prize. Uh, retired cop. I am one hell of a pension, I might add. And for your information, I've never been unfaithful to a woman in my life. Never wanted anything more than to settle down and raise kids. But not until I put in my time. I just couldn't see putting my wife and children through the kind of agony a cop's family has to put up with. In fact, that's why... My wedding was scheduled for a week after my retirement so that I could give her the best years of my life. And what did she do but bail out of me for a psychic nutrition? What? Psychic nutritionist. <laughs> wow! That's exactly what Uncle Guido said. nutritionist and I get thrown over for the entire female population of the planet so the moral is <laughs> moral is I'm sorry you got hurt I'm sorry you got hurt What do you think you're doing? Check. Not in your life. You got dinner. I'm the man. What is that supposed to mean? The woman's going to pay the check when she's with me. Excuse me, Mr. Neanderthal. I didn't see that bone in your nose. And nice meeting you, Miss Steiner. Now give that to me. Come on, that's an order. What do you think the chances are of me taking an order from you? Changed your hair. And then, when I am 18, I want to go to um, to America and study to become either a physics physicist or an electronic engine in engineer. Engineer. I'm having trouble deciding which. Oh, well, I understand what you mean, Antonio. When I was your age, I had trouble deciding between stewardess and model. So, you did not achieve either dream. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. Antonio, aiutami a fare i piatti. Dopo è ora di andare a letto. Sì, signora Mantegna. Grazie, caro. It was nice to meet you. Well, it was nice to meet you too, Antonio. I hope to see you soon. Don't forget, Papa. You have a very early meeting in the morning. I won't forget anything. Thank you. Dorme bene, Antonio. <laughs> oh, you're right, Marcello. He is amazing. Yes, he is. Sometimes I think he takes better care of me than I take of him. The one good thing to come out of this last two years is that uh, he and I have grown very close. But, hard as I try, I can't be everything to him. He's just a boy. He needs a mother. About that letter that you wrote to me two years ago that I never got, would you like to talk about it now? 
I don't know whether you've ever very suddenly lost someone that you loved. Makes you very aware of your own mortality. All the unfinished business in your life. All the things you may have left undone and unsaid. So, it seemed important to me to tell you, in case you didn't already know, that uh, I will always be very grateful to you. It changed my life all those years ago, Leia, in more ways than I can ever find words to express. You don't have to find the words. I know what you mean. I, I feel exactly the same way. You do? Does that surprise you? Our time together was so short and we were so young. It seemed almost like a miracle to me that you even remember, let alone... Leia, I can hardly believe that you're really here. Honestly? Mm -hmm. I find myself wondering whether it comes with a matching babushka. <laughs> <laughs> now, the one inside is much more you. A child but no husband. That's nice, Nick. That's real nice. You women scream about being looked at as sex objects, but you don't think twice about looking at men as nothing but a bunch of walking sperm banks. Yeah, well, I knew it would be too progressive a concept for you. By the way, have you heard? Someone invented the wheel bed. <laughs> Don't give me progressive. Just explain to me how you expect to find a man who's a big enough jerk to father a child and just walk away from it. I don't know. I figured I'd do one of these. <laughs> what are you supposed to be, tough? Maybe. Oh, yeah? Antonio, you want to spoil your appetite for dinner? I might. What are we having? Well, the only thing that I know how to make. Hamburgers. Really? We're having hamburgers? Yes, Antonio, just for you. Any day, Joe? Look, why don't you just give the guy a break? Huh? He'll be done in a minute or so. <laughs> no, it's not. Is your dress rented? <laughs> you know, they're not laughing to be polite. They're just laughing to be polite. <laughs> I'm not. I think he's funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. You saw Ishtar three times. What's the big deal? I like this star. <laughs> Thank you. I believe with all my heart that we can get through this together, Nikki. Thank God. I take it each time is a movie. <laughs> well, the debate reaches on, Marcello. <laughs> I must congratulate you, Joe, for uh, two people who met in a bathroom. You and Nikki seem perfectly suited for each other. I don't have to take this kind of abuse. This guy's got a cruel streak in him. You know that. Oh, I think he might be right. Don't start. <laughs> well, shall we show them how it's done, Gordon? I love you.
more to say. I mean, it's just not possible. Is it? Bonnie, I know just exactly how selfish this is of me. And you must understand, I'm not trying to <laughs> break up your marriage. Or maybe I am, I don't know. Perhaps I'm flattering myself to even think that I could. Forgive me, Bonnie. I, I know I've sprung this on you so suddenly. And I don't need a decision right away, but would you do me a favor? Just for the moment, put all the complications to one side and give me a simple answer to the simple question. Would you or would you not like to spend the next two weeks in Switzerland with me? Yes, I would. That's good enough for now. We'll discuss it further tomorrow. In the meantime, sleep well, my dear Bonnie. Thanks for a, a lovely evening. E evening, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, thanks for this slugger. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. So. Thanks again, and um, good night. <laughs> of being good old, reliable, predictable, boring Bonnie. Do you know that I have never had a spontaneous moment in my entire life? Well, actually, there was one. We named her Carol. <laughs> you know, guys, I'm not even saying it makes sense, okay? I just know that for some reason, this sweet, charming, witty man has shown up who makes me feel like I belong on a dance floor in a beautiful gown. Phil makes me feel like I belong in McDonald's in a sweatsuit. Alfred wants to know everything there is to know about me, and Phil wants to know where his lucky socks are. It's just that it's been a very long time since anybody made me feel as if I was worth paying attention to just because I'm Bonnie. In two more weeks of just being Bonnie, especially when it may be my last chance at it, just doesn't seem that much to ask. Do you know what I mean? Um, I'm not very objective on last chances right now since I'm facing one myself. Wait a minute. Are things getting serious with you and Marcello? I think so. I think for the second time in my life, he's going to ask me to stay. And? And? I look at this wonderful, sensitive, loving man he's become with a bright, beautiful son, and I say to myself, okay, Liam, which would you rather come home to at night, this or your cat? I can understand that. But what about your promotion? Ah, yes, my promotion. Yet another chance for me to sink myself even deeper into my almighty career so that I don't even notice how empty the rest of my life is. As your friend, uh, and because I love you, I feel obligated to point up a couple of things. Mm -hmm. You love your work. Of course I do, but I think I could do very well for myself here in Rome. Oh, I want it all, Bon. You of all people should understand that. Believe me, I do. But that brings up point number two. Yes, which is? Well, from where I sat, 
You had it all. With Mac, for three years. And you can't tell me you didn't love him. Yes, I loved him. But not as much as I loved Marcello. Don't you think I wanted to feel about a man, especially Mac, the way I felt about Marcello? Why should I have to settle for less than that? If by some miracle, I have a second chance. I'd be insane to pass it up. Am I right or am I right? No, you are right. Although, for the record, I wish you had said the way I feel about Marcello instead of the way I felt. I meant, I meant the way I feel. God, I hate it when you get so technical. God, I love this. You know, here's something I never thought I'd hear myself say. Gee, Nikki, you're awfully quiet. No, she hasn't said a word all morning. Which means that either Invasion of the Body Snatchers was really a documentary and this isn't Nikki at all, or someone named Joe has finally rendered our pal Nikki speechless for the first time in her life. I don't need Joe to render me speechless, not as long as you two are around. What is that supposed to mean? You are not going to like what I have to say. Never stopped you before. I just wish you could hear yourselves, that's all. Wait, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Mm hmm? We can hear ourselves. Let me just ask a question here. Okay. Have you both completely lost your minds or what? Gee, I hate it when she beats around the bush like that. So do I. You're going to have to learn to open up. You don't want to hear this? Fine. Well, Nick. It's just that when you feel as if things are really going well, it's difficult to look forward to a conversation that begins with, have you completely lost your minds? Well, I just think it's a legitimate question. Whoa. When I hear my two closest friends talking about turning their lives upside down over men that they have barely spent two weeks with. I mean, just think about that for a minute, will you? It's incredible. Do you see what these men do to us? Do you see why I don't want any part of it? If you both stood back and took a long look at what you're willing to walk away from, you would be scared to death. Scared to death, huh? Like you, Nick? Oh. Please, Leah, don't turn this around on me. This isn't about me. I don't have anything to be scared of. And unlike you two, I intend to keep it that way. What about Joe? What about him? What minute? He's starting to get to you. It's been so long since you let anybody get close, you don't have a clue what to do. Thank you, Bonnie McAfee, Radio Shrink. Yes, he is starting to get to me, but the operative word in that sentence is starting. I know exactly what I'm going to do about it. What? Cut it off right now. Oh, come on, Nikki. Why? Oh, you can't be serious. Do you know how much sleep I got last night? A half an hour. You saw me this morning. I couldn't even gag down a glass of orange juice. And you know why? Because Joe kissed me. <laughs> One kiss, and I can't sleep or eat. If God, we didn't make love. I'd probably have to be hospitalized. Well, excuse me, but I happen to think this is great news. Oh, and that's coming from a woman who's willing to jeopardize her marriage and run off with some guy she hardly who knows. Who said anything about jeopardizing my marriage? What do you think? Alfred just wants to take yodeling lessons with you? Come on, Bonnie. You think it hasn't even crossed his mind that he wants to enter into phase two with you? Don't you ever get tired of being so cynical? Bonnie, he hasn't exactly tried to hide the fact that he's attracted to you. If he asked you to go away with him for two days and you say yes, you think he's not going to take that as some kind of sign of encouragement? Give me a break. Look. I'm sorry. Look, I love you guys. And I want you to be happy, whatever that takes. And... I don't have any right to decide that for you. You don't have any right to decide that for me either. I just know the last time I felt like this about a man, I got really ripped up and I just don't want to do it again. your oars in the water, but I'm telling you this, when I get back to that hotel, I'm going to make it very clear to Joe, and I feel real strongly about this, I'm going to say that from now on, the only thing between us is a bathroom. I'm sure I'll find a better way to put it. Ah. You know, I have to 
say this. I think you're making a big mistake. Well, there's some great advice from Miss Dalsey and her companion Heidi. Are you coming? Not a chance. I want no part of this. Besides, this is Dalsey and Heidi have other plans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Although I understand the one in Los Angeles has more seating. <laughs> you know what? When we get to Switzerland, why don't we bail out on the rest of them and go and live in a quaint chateau somewhere? I could learn to make clocks or something, and you could skip through the Alps to your heart's content, gathering Edelweiss in your skirts. <laughs> Although I should imagine the novelty of that could wear off quite quickly. You know, if you're having second thoughts about this, it's all right. I quite understand. I mean, would it help if I assured you that I, I'm not going to press you in any way about this? Whatever would make you feel comfortable over the next two weeks is fine by me. Separate rooms, separate hotels, separate cities. We can call each other. But I can't promise that I'll behave like a complete gentleman all the time. I mean, you'll never be any, in any doubt as to whether I'm attracted to you or not. I'm sorry, I... <laughs> Most people would, would have the sense to remain quiet when they have nothing to say. I, on the other hand, have this annoying tendency to blather. Would you save me from making an even bigger fool of myself by talking for a while? I really do want to know what you're feeling. I know you do. So do I. Uh, frankly, at this moment, I haven't got a clue. You know, the last time I said these words, I was 16, but... It's just that I've never done this kind of thing before. In case it's not already pitifully apparent, neither have I. Is that true? <laughs> you seem surprised. I don't know whether to be flattered or insulted. <laughs> no, I, if there was one thing I was as a husband, and it's probably only one thing I was, it was faithful. Uh, under the circumstances, I'm not sure. I appreciate hearing that. <laughs> oh, Bonnie, please, it's, it's nothing I deserve any medals for. I don't even admit to myself how often I've fantasized about having a whole string of wildly torrid and ultimately heartbreaking affairs. What stopped you? Well, I wish I could say it was my love for Eleanor. And I did love her. I mean, I was never in any doubt about that. No, I think if the truth were known, it was a combination of cowardice, shyness, and laziness. But which is worse, a man who cheats on his wife or one who preoccupies himself with the thought of it to distract himself from the mounting evidence that somewhere along the way his wife stopped caring anymore evidence like what oh big things small things the same things that happen to most couples i guess who stop bothering to talk or listen i'll never forget one night about 10 years ago i heard my wife crying and i leaned over and took her in my arms and asked her what was wrong. She started to cry harder and told me she was lonely. Well, all her children had left home and that's painful for most women. No, it's painful for men too. But not nearly as painful as having the woman you've committed your whole life to tell you how 
lonely she is while you're holding her in your arms. As though my loving her made, gave her no comfort at all. And I'm not proud of this, but after that night, I suppose in my way, I simply stopped trying, which only made matters worse. I think we would have been kinder to each other had we known we were going to run out of time so unexpectedly. <laughs> Oh, you're crying. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Bonnie. It's unforgivable of me to be so maudlin and self-indulgent. I promise you, this won't happen again. Don't I... apologize. I'm glad you told me. And uh, for what it's worth, my guess is, is that um, she got so focused on what was missing in her life that she pushed you away, and then she resented you for not being there. But underneath it all, I'm sure she never stopped loving you. I'd like to believe that. Oh, you can. Take my word for it. Well, Leah, how wonderful that you kept this all these years. Look at us. How young we were. So pretty, too. Although I do wish you had uh, spoken to me about my hair. How on earth did you keep a straight face trying to make love to a man whose hair was longer than yours? Oh, poor me. I had to force myself. <laughs> Where did these last two weeks go? Speaking of which, Antonio and I had a very serious discussion this morning before he left for school. And, uh... Well, there's something I want to ask you. Oh, I'm so glad that you discussed it with Antonio first. <laughs> <laughs> I had no choice. He's been obsessed with the idea ever since the night he met you. He has? Oh, well, I'm so relieved. I happen to spend a lot of time with children, and I can't tell you how thrilled I am that I've won him over. You represented something to him that he's wanted so much for such a long time. But it's just such a big decision. Not that I didn't see it coming, but I must admit that I've uh, spent a few sleepless nights over it in the past week or so. To be honest, it, uh, it scares me a little. It scares me a little, too. Yes? Well, of course it does. But I think we both know it's right, don't we? Yes, it's, uh, it's right. Then there's no reason to be scared. Oh, I just can't wait to see the look on his face when you... you tell him I said yes, I'm going to stay. You're what? I don't blame you for being surprised, but... Oh, Marcello, I've given this so much thought, and... and... and this is what I want. I want a career right here in Rome with, with you and Antonio beside me, sharing. You must have known I, I couldn't walk away from you twice in a lifetime. Leia. Um, you know, I, I can't help but notice you're not whirling me ecstatically around the terrace. What is it? My God, Leia, I, I, I don't know what to say. Well, uh, why don't you start with... The big discussion that you and Antonio had this morning. What was it about exactly? He wanted to know once and for all whether I intended to let him go to college in America. And uh, I was going to ask you to send him some brochures. <laughs> well, of course. Of course I will. You know, I, I have to get back to the hotel because... Bonnie and Nikki are waiting for me. Leia, please don't go. We obviously need to talk. I am so sorry. You caught me completely by surprise. I had no idea. You had no idea? What happened to... Leah, you changed my life. But you did. By leaving me. By forcing me to see that what we had was a beautiful fantasy. It was a time to grow up, to make some real decisions. 
If you had not been wise enough or brave enough to leave, I might never have finished school. I might never have taken a good look at my paintings and faced up to how remarkably untalented I was. I might never have made myself think about what was really important to me and go after it at all costs, as you did. Thanks to you, I have spent my life surrounded by great art instead of my own. I have known the joy of giving myself completely to my wife and child. And the last two weeks? I have given two very adult, very successful old friends a rare chance to relive some lovely memories. And to affirm a thought for both of us that the separate paths we took all those years ago turned out to be the right ones after all. Leia. I am so sorry. Guys, this is great. Half an hour ago, we couldn't stop crying. Now we can't stop laughing. This is supposed to mean we're healing. This isn't called healing, Bon. This is called too much wine. You don't remember that fourth bottle of wine with dinner? I don't remember dinner. You know what I think? What, Bon? I think it's no wonder Phil said I could go off to Switzerland. I mean, I could probably stay there for all the reason I've given him to care. And what is so swell about Switzerland anyway? I mean, I hate yodeling. And I love my husband. Bonnie? What? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> OK. You know what I think? What? What? I think I'm never going to initiate another conversation as long as I'm there. <laughs> Wait. I also think that I I overestimated the city the first time I was here. Oh. Well, take a look at it. It's so old. <laughs> You know what I think? If it's the bit about how you're glad Joe left because you never cared about him anyway, save your breath. After watching you sob uncontrollably all night, we are probably not going to buy it. True. Thank you so much. No. You're welcome. That is not what I think. Here's what I think. I think that somehow, and I don't know how or why or what, I know that absolutely everything is going to come out perfect. Oh. You know why? Why? It's going to be a miracle. A miracle is going to happen. And our lives are going to be happy. Oh, whoa. Something is going to happen. Some sort of magical, mystical kind of sign. And it's going to give us all back our hope. Then again, what the hell do I know? Orphan. Oh, yeah, name one orphan who's seen a penny of it. <laughs> hey, bud. Hey, look, you followed me home from the airport. Can I keep him? It's unbelievable. I get off the plane, I'm stumbling around this nut house they call an airport looking for my damn luggage, which by this time has either been stolen or it's halfway to Finland or something. I, you know, so I figure I'll go in the bar and I'll sit down and um, I'll wait for it to show up, you know? And this crazy guy comes up to me, introduces himself, asks, offers to buy the first round like he knows me. I'm a cop, Phil. Trained in the detection of the tiniest, most obscure details. In fact, the fact that your name is printed on your shirt. Oh, yeah. Well, now, don't think that I want to miss a moment of this joyous reunion, but I think all you guys need to be alone.
can't believe it. I can't believe you came. Neither can I. Hey, listen, there's a couple of things you and I gotta get straight. Yeah. First of all, if anybody's gonna take you to Switzerland, it's gonna be me. And secondly, you don't just take a person's lucky socks and throw them in the rag basket without asking them first. You got that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, hey, hey. Come on now. Hey. Let's give a little perspective here. The only socks. <laughs> So what'd you come back here for? Well, this guy, Phil, I mean, I didn't think he was gonna get out of the airport, let alone make it. Oh, well, if you just came back to be Phil's tour guide, you can leave again, you know. That's fair. Where were you going, anyway? That kind of changed from one drink to the next. New York? London, Paris, Hong Kong, Tibet. Yeah, well, on the fifth scotch, I went through this monk thing. Past. Stockholm, Cairo. Los Angeles. So you're not disappointed? For myself, dreadfully. For you? How could I be? I showed Phil the dress you picked out for me. Oh, what did he say? Well, after I calmed him down about the price, <laughs> we made a deal. Once a month, I'm gonna watch him bowl, and once a month, he's gonna take me somewhere where I can wear it. Sure. <laughs> We've got a long way to go, but let's start. Yes, well, perhaps we'll bump into each other in Switzerland. I, I'd uh, kind of like to meet Phil, actually. Tell him what a lucky guy he is. But if that doesn't happen, I insist that you make him aware of it. Thank you for everything. you're here. I was so worried. I was up all night trying to call you. How are you? Where were you? I just had a lot of self-pity to wallow in. Took a while. Listen, I am so sorry I ran out on you like that. No, no, no. Please, I am the one who is so sorry. Oh, you don't have any reason to be sorry, Marcello. What would you be sorry for? <laughs> It is amazing how much thinking you can do when you don't waste those same hours sleeping. And the more I thought, the more I realized what a fool I would be to let you leave me again. What? Leah, I thought you were leaving the life that you'd always dreamed of. How could I have imagined a place in it for Antonio? If we really could make it work, if you really think it could make you happy, then... Please don't, Marcello. This is your conscience talking, not your heart. You know, it's, it's really kind of funny when you look at it. All these years, 
You've been giving me credit for being the one who was strong enough to walk away when, in fact, it was you who was strong enough to let go. You went on with your life, and I only went on with half of mine and used you as an excuse to keep the other half at a nice, safe distance. But the truth is, if this makes any sense, these last two weeks, these lovely new memories you and your son have given me, well, they've made me anxious to go back home where I belong and, and make up for lost time. Including apologizing to a very nice man named Mac for all the years I held it against him that he wasn't a beautiful young Italian artist I fell very much in love with. This is very hard for me to say. But for both of our sakes, I think it's really finally time I say goodbye, Marcello. Okay. Yeah. Hey, don't worry about it. <laughs> oh. So how does it feel knowing that a man flew thousands of miles just to spend time with you? Like, real. <laughs> Sometimes happy endings are a lot better than you imagine, huh? That's true. Yeah. Bye, honey. Oh, I miss you. Oh, bye. Love you guys. Love you. Oh, 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 I'm going on the same way. Hey, hey, hey. You want to move it or what? You want to keep your shirt on? At least till we get home. Ooh. Ooh. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Okay, so why don't you take it and impress me? Yeah, I don't want to. Now you want to carry, you carry oh, it. Oh, Joe, take the damn bag. There's a word missing there someplace. Joe, take the damn bag. Please. He's good. I know. 